All right, welcome back. This is Goblin Marine again, and this time I'm talking about the second game in Dillinger Windy City Warmonger Season 8 or 9, one of the two. Uh, and it's Dillinger. This week I'm up against Boba Phobics, Boba's Bounty Hunters. Now, this is a Chaos Kill team, so let's. So, he's got like 600 TV on me, so he's got Guard. Block and guard, block, dodge and guard, block, block, claw palm, another lodge guard player, another dodge player, uh, guard stand firm, tentacle claw minnow, space dandy's a beast, another killer in the works, just without pylon, a uh, blank beast, another killer with tackle, mighty blow, and, and block, that's the elf hunter. So he's got a lot of really good damaging pieces. On my side, I've got Weebang, my retriever. I've got Booty Be Gone, who's going to probably eat, bite it. My killer is missed next game this week, so I took a guard Merc Blitzer. I think he comes in handy a little bit. I got Glart, because always good to have that against high armor. Uh, Boba has the Wizard Stadium, so I took a Bribe and a Babe and another Apo, and the intent there is either to Apo a badly hurt, or a KO to power Apo it. So the goal there is to keep players on the pitch. So I'm not overly optimistic about this game because his team's so killy. And he just goes all mans on the line. Like, that, that's a dwarf line up there. All right, where's the kick going? Right behind him. Pushes on the goblins. So the goblins on the line, he has one tackle, I believe. So I'm not too worried about the, the, the goblins taking a bunch of hits. Three dice aren't too hard to get pals on, so he's going to get some of them. But I don't think he breaks too many. Uh, he's going after my guard Merc, which is fine, but kind of annoying because that's an expensive piece. Like, I, I, pay, I paid like 170 for that piece, and it's really not worth that. Like, <laughs> my fully developed killer is 190, and that piece is 170. So, eh, a little overpriced. See, doesn't get him. But he knows that I'm going to try and foul this beast if he leaves him if he leaves him deserted. So he's got to protect it, right? So this is where if I had a goblin that had like sneaky get, I would just kick him. Like who cares about assists? Who cares about anything? Just boom, boot. But without without something like that, it's a little bit risky because I'm probably not going to break armor on, you know, an AV9 piece with a solo. That's the ball. That's unfortunate, because I easily could have gone around. Now, I want to see... I know this rat goes around, because I'm trying to put some pressure on the ball. I don't know about going around this way. Um, it's a little bit too risky. I'll get pinned on the sidelines. So, I, I think I reposition to get in front of him, and to take up this space to try and push him back to the middle, while sending at least one player around, just to be annoying. Like, just to draw his blitz. So the troll is going to reposition first to just be sort of an anchor. It looks like he's going to this side of the field, so i got to get the big guy in the way. Uh, setting up a screen back here. Glart's probably the blitz on him. That's probably what I'm doing with that. And then lastly, I'll probably pull this goblin out of the way. Okay, so this isn't a screen, but he's not close enough. And if he scores on turn two I don't or three, I don't really care at all. So I'm not too worried about stopping him. I'm just trying to get in his way. Ow. And then I'm going to anchor the sideline with Glart. All right. Tentacles is fake. I roll box cars. Really unfortunate to get an injury first turn, but that just happens. And it's better a goblin than a rat, really. Goes after Glart. Rerolls. That's unfortunate. And that that's a big opening, I don't know that I fully exploit it. So, this guy should have gone around last turn, so now, he, instead of him being up here and being able to one-die the ball, you know, and that, that guy doesn't have block. So, instead of this guy being up in here somewhere, one, two, three, four, five, six, like up over here, to blitz the ball, he's all back here. So, I'm, I'm, I'm not in a, an aggressive enough posture to go after the ball. I could slide through, one, two, three, four, five, six, but then I'm at the line, and then he can surf me. So, I think that this guy was misplaced on the first turn. 
I'm setting up more just to stand in his way than to actually play defense. Yeah. Stay. Alright, so now I can get through even better. <clears throat> That's obviously going to be my, my blitz. Coming to activate the troll, and I'm going to pull the troll up in here. Uh, move, well, that's fine too, but just to kind of get him in the way, you know. Get him somewhere to stop him from just coming through the middle. Dub skulls, reroll, doubled both downs, so I got to take the block. This is where Juggernaut, uh, I, I think I'm going to start taking Juggernaut on these guys instead of Pylon. I don't use Pylon enough. It kind of, I lose them a lot when I Pylon. And Juggernaut lets me do this and push him away and makes him useful. So, I should have marked the ball there, but I'm just being annoying, right? Like, that's, again, I'm not being aggressive enough. I'm trying to protect my safety. Should be in a more aggressive posture. My, my retriever is nowhere near the ball. So, he's not, he's not doing his job. He's not even threatening to do his job. But, this guy can pull some BS to sack. So, this and that together is a two-die. If he doesn't protect. So he's consolidating. Um, he needs to be aware. He's not respecting the fireball right now. Because he's got these three guys are tight. Like that's fireball. That's a three fireball. This is a three fireball. This is a four fireball. I will fireball you if you put four pieces. Like this guy I want out. This guy I want out. This guy and this guy I would take. So I'm. Th this is a fireball. Just... It's going to happen if he stays there. So I'm trying to reposition and get more of my players in it. He's going to go after him. Get the pow. Boom. Stay. Guard player comes over to activate the troll. Clearly there's a foul here from the goblins. Like that, That's obviously what's happening here. Kick. AO. Not a bribe. Aww. So, turn three, I've used both my rerolls. And again, I've got kind of a crappy screen here. He can get through, but I can pinch him then. So, I'm okay with that. Um, <clears throat> he's really tempting. A fireball if he leaves these guys close. I know I'm going to say that a lot. And a lot of people hate the fireball. They think it's a waste of the wizard because you're not getting the ball free. But with my retriever not positioned to get the ball, right now a lightning bolt's no good. It doesn't do me any good. Pylon again. That piece has got to get fouled next turn, probably. So this is a three piece. That's not a good fireball. I need at least four, ideally five. Space Dandy. He really wanted to do something with him. So he, he burns it on the loner. He's still got plenty of rerolls, but I don't... Yeah, so now he gave me four. And again, there's still two guard blodge pieces in there. Fireball is my best shot. It's a 50% shot at getting him down. That's better than a one die. That's better than a two die. So, I'm going to take it. Pow! What happens? Injure a blodge guard piece. So, that's what you get when you set me two blodge guard pieces. I'm going to take the fireball and get one. Well, I'm not always going to get one, but I'm going to take the fireball. Guard rat doing a thing. That's unfortunate, but I use wrestle to get him out of the way. This guy now has a one die. I'm basing the ball. I'm way too passive with this guy. I'm protect. I'm overprotective of him. Like he should be in the action. Now I got a two die. Get him. I wouldn't have mind staying there, but now I'm going to kick him. Oh, I'm going to kick him. Even better. Kick the killer. Break armor. Stun. Got to burn the bribe. But that's okay. I've gotten a KO and a stun off of those for the bribe. And I don't have to foul for the rest of it. A KO and a stun out of that is reasonable. I may foul. I don't remember. But also notice that Obsolich, my runner, is off the pitch right now. Because I want, I was worried about a rock, and I really need him on offense. My offense sucks without him. AV7 held up. Pow. Gonna push him there. So, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I mean, he can't get through now. There's, like, no way for him to get through here, which is fine with me. 
And he's going to punch this guy with the ball carrier, because he already used his blitz. Or not. Yeah, he's going to make it a three die and then punch him. Pushes. Look at that. Not punished at all. Okay. So, I don't have a play at the ball. I'd like to get this goblin here to have him come in. At least one closer. Because right now he's not really helping. You know, <laughs> ear fart needs to be... The problem is these guys all have, like, guard. He's got a guard, two guarders in here. So I can't just, like, step. He'll punch me. Uh, and that, that's the thing about the trolls. That's why I like the Tenetrol more than the Claw Troll. Is that the Tenetrol helps more versus elves. Trolls against Bash teams, they usually have enough guard to deal with big guys. So he's not really that helpful. And if he's got... He's still got a Claw Palm piece right here. He's down right now. But if that piece hits the troll, the troll's going down. So trolls, I feel, on Underworld add more against Agi teams. Because they're bigger and scarier than against Bash teams that really have the skills to deal with them. This troll is on skill, it doesn't matter, but that's just my little diatribe on why I like the Tenet Troll more than the Claw Troll. That said, I might like the Claw Troll more if I'd had the chance to use mine. The last time I had a Claw Troll, he died immediately after leveling. So I'd like to see a little bit of push through here. So what I, what I go for here is I go for a push play, but I forget that Space Dandy has to stand firm, I think, and it doesn't work. So I think that's what I go for. Pow, push into him, push into Space Dandy. Nothing. That was a mistake. So what I should have done there is pushed him into him, into this guy, into contact with the ball. Because this is this is not a garter. So if I can get around somehow, or even just get the goblin in. Well, there's tentacles, so that's probably not happening. But at least I'd have like a, a half die on the ball then. Or at least base the ball. Just leave him alone and base the ball. So, once again, I'm trying to set up some kind of weird, some kind of semi-protected screen. Fail tentacles, and just say that's okay. I don't stand him up, because I don't want him to push through. Because he'll push him here, and then there, and then his minnow will be here, and he can surf Glart more easily. So that's why I leave that guy down. He does a better job of, a, a better job of it. Oh, wrong. He does his job better by being on the pit, just on the on the floor. So, he's been kind of bashy here. He just wants to grind me down, and right now I'm keeping up. Push. <clears throat> so, he's going to go for... Oh, he doesn't go for the surf. Okay, he goes for this guy. Gets a pow. What happens? Gets a stun. So that's fine. Pylon. Still a... Oh, it's a KO. Alright, so he's... Hopefully I foul him again, if he doesn't defend him. Uh, I guess my goblin... I only have one goblin on the pitch who's not leveled. So that's a problem. Glart's, Glart's in trouble now. I'm not going to save him because he's Glart. Like, his job is to, to do this instead of my team doing this. Uh, oh, I wanted to get him out of there. Push here... I don't know if I move the troll. I get Space Dandy with Glart. And look at that. I get an injury on Space Dandy. That's great. He apples it. Because it was a, a 5 plus 5 is like a strength or AV bust. I think it was an AV bust into a badly hurt. So he saves his minnow. Probably now I have to stand him up. Yeah. But he it, this guy needed to be here to really protect Glart. So... There's holes in my screen. He's still pretty far back. It's getting late in the drive, which turns it turns seven. So at this point, I'm just wondering if I have enough players to stop him from scoring or not. Like if I can get in his way, I can make it hard to score. Um, he's gonna hit him out of the way so that this guy can come here and hit him into Glart. Yep. So Glart goes out. Good on him for the surf play. That was, that was a smart play. And Glart is out of the game. Turn 7. So, if the Apo had not worked on the Minnow, if that had been an MNG again or something, would have been would have been a much better second half for me. But, as it is, he took the Minnow out. 
get got a shot on the minnow and may have saved me a little bit here. But so this guy's in scoring range. Boba Fett the third is is in scoring range. So I got to stop him from scoring somehow. I'm not sure how. Uh, there's not really a way, a good way in there. You know, I got a what's this a four plus for a negative two die. Alright, so I take the Russell Rat, punch him, take a one die on him. So this is not a screen, right? Like, he can get through here. Uh-oh, that's no good. So he can score. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like, he has an easy, well, he has to dodge away or punch this guy away. So it's not hard. Like, it's not hard for him to score now. He takes his killer. That's not the right guy. You want to use the killer. Yeah, whatever. But I think the killer's the right way to do it, because you almost guarantee your removal. And now you just walk it in. He's taking all his blocks. And now you just walk it in for the score, right? And then I have to either go for a troll throw on this goblin, or I can go for a push play on Obsolich and look for three pushes. KO's the troll. So I say, look, I'm, I need a one-turn touchdown. Power Apo the troll. That's why I took a second Apo. So... Got to keep him on the pitch. And he doesn't score. At this point, I'm like, dude, it's turn eight. What are you doing? And he says, well, I'm not about to line up for six hits. He's afraid of my claw. The one claw piece I have, he's afraid of. Like, put that in. Put that in. I'm, it's, a, it's like a 15% play to throw a goblin. And the pushes on this thrower, I need three or four pushes to get him in there. That's a rough play to make. So, I'm going to take... This hit, I get him here, and then I'm a foul. Foul him. Go, go, go. Nothing. And that's the end of the half. And I, I will take a 0 0 half, right? Because basically, he let me, well, he decided that he didn't want to score. So I got saved there. So I've got two out, he's got two out. His pieces are really good that are out. Like, those are those are good, good beast men. Um, and, you know, Glart's good, but this goblin's nothing. So that's, what is that, 250 that I've got lost, and he's at 20, 40, 60, 80, 130. We're even. We're at, I think we're both at, like, 250 out right now. So... That's not great since I used the fireball too. I'm down basically 150 on the fireball and another 100 on the apo, but I got use out of it. The, the trolls on the pitch, and I've got a full team. I'm at 11. He's at 10 because he had one man bench. So I'm setting up. Um, I'm not sure. Like he's got a lot of beef. He's got a lot of strength. I don't know that I can get through him. But see, I'm happy with that because it makes it harder if I score. It makes it harder for him to score. And look, hold on. Three plus, I roll a three, extra arms, did a thing on Obsolich. I just wanted to point that out, because people think he should have taken big hand instead. Extra arms did a thing. All right. Nothing. But my guard guy's doing something. That that journeyman, or the merc, rather, is doing something. So I'm going to try and set up... Uh, yeah, so he's setting up the screen here so that they can't get through. Because he's got a he's got a lightning bolt, right? So I've got to be aware that if I come forward too much, he's gonna lightning bolt me and go for the ball. So I've got a little bit of a box here. A <clears throat> little bit of a box here. And this this player's capable of some BS, which will be th these two players are my BS players. I mean Obsolich is insane, but Snicket and Wee Bang are good as well. So we'll see what he does. He's, I'm trying to see what he, he'll do, get him to commit to something. Uh, that's committing for sure, but that's what that, that's what that player does. Right. Oh man, bad time. He rolled a 7. If he didn't have Mighty Blow or didn't have Claw, that wouldn't have done it. Oh well. 
greed rerolls. Look at that. He is in full on tilt kill mode right now. I don't think that's a bad decision, you know, but he'd have been fine just taking the both down. All right. So when he started coming up, I was like, that's interesting. And then he started moving all his guys up and immediately I see all these, all the strength all engaged with me and all I can think is punt play. Now, it's not a good play. Punting is giving up the ball. But here, here's my logic. If I can get four or five guys behind him, probably I can get a local player advantage because he can't just run away from the guys who are engaged. They have to deal with the players they're engaged with. So if I can get a local player advantage on the back of the field and, and use my maneuverability and my speed to get back there with them and cover the ball, I can score. I can get a punt and score. Also... You can't lightning bolt the ball carrier if ain't nobody got the ball. So if I'm not holding the ball, he can't use his lightning bolt to get the ball free. So that's, at the end of the day, that's why I punt. Uh, and I, I think the punt comes this turn, is that I don't want to be holding the ball and have him lightning bolt me and lose the game on that. So that's essentially playing into his plan. That's why he didn't score in the first half was, well, I'm going to bog him down, I'm going to grind him down, I'm going to lightning bolt the ball carrier and get it in the second half. That's what he was thinking. So... People don't, like this team, and I'm going to point this out because I need to get better as a player, so people need to stop letting me get away with this garbage. Uh, last season against Riazzi, I pulled a punt play. Against RK Blaze, I went for a punt play. That's that's that failed pass that I had that cost me the playoffs. That was going to be a punt play. Against Angra, the, the Amazon team, I went for a punt play. Against Boba here, I'm going to go for a punt play. That's like four of my last ten games I've gone for punts, and that's just the ones that I remember. So... You guys got to start covering it. If he had one beast man here, I can't punt. Because I, I got to cover that beast man and punt and get other players back to get the ball. But all his guys are up and tied up. I can get this guy around. I can get this guy free and around. My goblins, this goblin, this goblin, and that goblin can get around. This guy can come up and cover. I, I can get a lot of players at, behind him. And there's not a lot. He, he then has to play catch up. He has to get through me or around me to get to the ball. So I believe this turn I go for the punt. Uh, it, it was a matter mostly of how risky do I, like how many guys, how many dodges do I want to make before the punt? That's what my question was in my mind. How many guys do I risk dodging out before I go for that play? That made me, my heart was pounding there. Okay, so I go for the punt play right now, right? And I took another dodge with him. I just want it inaccurate, and look at this. Bang. That is really hard to get to. He has to knock this guy off, and then blitz this guy to get close to the ball, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This guy can base the ball on two GFIs. This guy can get to the ball on two GFIs with a blitz. This guy can't get anything. I have these guys, all of whom dodge out on two pluses, all prepared on this sideline, and this goblin covering the ball. Like, this rat can even come around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So on one GFI, if he gets the ball on one GFI, this rat can wrestle, tackle, blitz the ball carrier. Like, th that's almost the best case. Now, it would have been nice to try and sneak these guys out, but I think he has tackle here, so I didn't want him. And I like this guy being tied to this goblin. Like, he can dodge away. He's got three Agi. But it's Boba wants to kill things. He's going to want to punch that goblin. So I have nobody in my backfield. If he gets this ball and gets it past me, I'm doomed. But I have 11, and I've got five of my guys prepared to get to the ball. He's got two that can even reach it. So that's why I went for that play. I, again, it's not guaranteed. Uh, but that's, in my mind, that was the best play to make. Uh, and we'll see how it works out here. Injures ear fart. So that sucks. I'm not going to use two apples on him. But he rolls over and gets up. Like, that never happens to me. I mean, it happens. Statistically, it'll happen 50%. But that, that seems like it never happens to Underworld Trolls. So he's trying to free this guy up. But again, he's, he's only got like a couple guys that can reach the ball. And I've got a bunch of players that dodge out on two pluses, two of whom have dodge. And he only has one tackle. He gets him with tackle. Is it a removal? I don't remember. 
it's not even an armor break. So he's going to base the ball, but he's not going to try picking it up. This is good of him to, to get on these players. He's getting in the way of my rat. See, I told you he was going to punch the goblin. That's what he wants to do, is punch things. Gets him, and I don't care where this beast goes. I don't remember. That helps a little. Okay. Trips. Rerolls. Makes it. Okay. So now, now I've made it a game. I've made it messy, and... Underworld tend to do better in messy games like this, right? So he's got one, two, three, four, five. And I have one, two, three, four, five. So we're even here on this half. That means I have more players up here because I have maybe not. With the troll out, we have the same number of players up here. But my players are more agile, right? Like he's got agi three dodges. I've got a bunch of agi four dodges, two of whom have dodge. And this, this warrior's not doing anything. Like he just isn't. So I've just got to swarm the ball and hope I can keep him off of it. And I'll, I'll take a 0-0. Zero, zero. If I can keep this game to 0-0, zero, zero, you know, he's got five turns to get down the pitch if he can get the ball. If I can keep him from getting the ball, that's a win for me. So first off, Obsolich runs up to get to the ball because he has move. Oh, he bases the ball. I had committed my team reroll to this. And I get him here. So now the play is Goblin goes 1, 2, 3, GFI. That's the play. I'm going to try and cover the ball, and the Goblin's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, I should have moved this guy first, because it just would have been smart to have another Goblin back. Uh, and what did I roll? Did I roll Snakes or 1 and 2? I rolled a 2 and a 1, so that's unfortunate. But that was that was the play, right? I got a 1 and 9, then it was another 1 and 9, then a 1 and six or something. One and thirty six if I still had the reroll. So that was the play. Now he's making it hard on me. But I still have this rat, right? Who again this rat can dodge out. If I can get this beastman off, this rat can dodge free. Because this guy, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He can't do that. He's only got five movement now that he's down. And this is what seals it, right? So he's a, he thinks, I'm doing it with Obsolich, which is smart. And again, that's why this guy should be up here, because ain't nothing stopping Weebang from getting that ball. He's out of position. That was a mistake. It was worth the 1 in 36 to try and pull him up before blitzing and trying to get the ball. Okay. So the play now is to blitz one die him off. I just need a push, right? 2 plus... 5 plus, 2 plus for the win, or for the for the score. So it's a 2 plus, 5 plus, 2 plus, which is not the greatest chain of things to do, because that 5 plus is going to make that make that rough, but let's see. Uh, if I do that, you have 5, 6 times 5, 6 times 1 third. Uh, which looks to be a 23% play, but then with the re-roll, you have one-sixth, one-sixth, and two-thirds. So that's a 46% play. Like, this score is a 46.3% play, and I'm going to score. Uh, not counting the blocks. The blocks are, are a different thing. It's a one die. So that makes it a little harder, but all I need is a push. And I have wrestle, so I could take... This is a 1 in 6. It's a, it's a 2 plus, basically. Now I make it a 1 in 36, right? So I make that a 1 in 36 after taking a 1 in 36, which is pretty pretty safe to add to the, to the chain. So now the play is out, in, and out. And now I get the clutch 6, and I'm free. So he said that that was a dirty play, that that, that was playing dirty, that punt, because he didn't think about it. But... You've got a lightning bolt, and you're bash heavy, and you're trying to grind me down. I'm not just going to try and walk around you and leave a ball, ha a ball handler hanging out there. Uh, that was the best, the best shot I had at scoring, I think. I, I still firmly believe that that was the right play in that situation. Um, I, I, I'm not really 
playing for the win. I'm playing for the not loss on this game. Uh, you know, so I don't know what else he expected me to do. He's He had me tied up. He had a firm line. But he had nobody in his backfield. Like, that's... Again, I need people to to be to make me play more honest because that is absolutely like a risk play. But I feel like it was the right one and it paid off. And it, those punt plays pay off often enough for me as Underworld that until somebody proves that that's not that, like giving myself a fifty percent to win on that play and the play before was a one and nine, a one and nine and a one and six. Like that's, I mean, it's a little bit of that. It's a one and nine two thirds and a one and six and then a reroll on the on, on two of them so I had some good chances to score there that it turned out to be the second attempt but the first attempt was probably a better one let's let's look that up actually so it's eight ninths well let's do it this way eight ninths times two thirds times five six times one plus one third plus one sixth. Yeah, so the, the previous one that I failed was a 74%. The second one was a 46%. So 74 plus 26 times 46. O overall, it was an 86% play to score between those two turns. Again, not counting the blocks, not counting the, the dodges out. But I could add them, you know, that... Two one and thirty sixes doesn't really change the odds that much. Um, so times thirty five over thirty six times thirty five over thirty six. Yeah, so it's like an eighty five percent chance of of doing that, which is better than a one in six. It's it's almost a one in nine actually between those two turns trying to score. So. I mean, it was it, it was bashy, or it was it was rowdy. It was rough, but I I believe it was the right thing to do. I gave myself an eight ninth chance at scoring between those two turns. That was or between those two plays. That was pretty good. Um, all right, so now I'm I'm trying to hope my team holds up. I got four guys out. He's got two guys out, so he's got the man advantage. You know, he's got ten men on the pitch. I've got nine, and he's bashy and buff. He's got plenty of time. He's got three turns. So if this beast man ends up here this turn, he can score with him. Pushes. Doesn't have tackle. So, again, this piece is amazing. What he does for me. Because his speed's what allowed him to be back in the backfield. And the fact that he's got extra arms and two heads. Like, it'd be better if it was Agi. But this, this guy's one of my... He's as expensive and as good as Snillich. The two of them really are this team. If they die, then I, I basically am restarting. I don't have to reroll because it will cause a reroll. Then you got Sneed Venom. He's good too. Uh, and Weebang's amazing. But those two, the, the Killer Rat and the Runner Rat, are really the ones that make this team. I really need to level up more Fail Scuttle. He needs three, two scores or three casualties. Okay. Block on the Troll doing a thing. So, okay, I'm going to try and screen. I don't have enough players, really. These these guys are stuck on him. That's terrible. Uh, this guy needs to either come around or just try to base the ball. I don't have enough guys to screen. Right? I can't I can't pull an elf screen because he can just go around me. The troll has to stand up. So I also need to waste a player on the troll. This guy needs to, he needs to get out of there. But that's not too hard. It's 3 plus 2 plus with dodge. Elves do that kind of crap all the time. I just leave it till the end of the turn. And don't do anything risky. So, have to expose him unless somebody goes in front of him. Yeah, so he's going to get the troll. The troll obliges and stands up. He's a blitz on this guy then. Oh, on him. And he's going to have to stay. Oh, ooh, look at that KO. So he followed, uh, which is not the smart move, but it works. Okay, so uh, this isn't a real screen. Like, he can he can break that goblin and get through. This is a little better. Tentacles fail. And I go here, because stunty, why not? 
And I failed the last dodge, but Sunti gets me. So he, he bolts me and gets the stun. So now he can get through, right? Because he can get this guy out. He can blitz this guy. But he still has to deal with the goblin, right? So I, I'm making him bash it, but he's going to... He, I, I'm not going to put up much of a fight here. I don't have enough rats. You know, I got five five of my 13 out. Um, Pal on a goblin. That's for, oh, on that goblin. And that's a tackle piece. Look at that. Tackle doing a thing. KO. So now I have no pieces to get in his way. Like, this is not going to be a hard score for him. And unlike the first half, this time I don't think he's going to wait. <laughs> so he needs somebody in front of this. Or to just eye cage. No, so he marks a goblin. Bashi, he gets Rowdy on the troll, which is smart of him. This guy can still get out. That's not really a problem. That makes it harder. So, gives up the troll. This guy's going to come around back somewhere. One die on him. How? But again, this isn't going to be a hard score. Like, no matter where I put him... Unless he unless he's standing on the ball. But even then, there's not a good place. Like okay. So I get out, but then I fail a two plus. Like I was gonna come back in here somewhere, but it, it now he doesn't need anything to score. Like he gets this goblin out of the way. And he just walks it in. He's gonna make it a three die, which is smart. He's gonna use tackle, which is smart. He didn't need tackle, but he was smart to use it. And now he's going to walk it in. So, if he'd scored the first half, unless I pull a one-turner, he has won this game. Uh, so, th that's a lesson to score when you when you have a chance. He took a calculated risk that he could get, get it from me on the lightning bolt. Uh, maybe didn't realize who he was playing. Because, again, I punt all the damn time. Like, that's just something that's in my regular repertoire. I look for it. Any chance I can do it. It gets me away from a bash game. It's an elfy thing to do. And I, I really think Underworld are good at it in a way that other teams, some other teams suffer or, or aren't just because of the stunties. Like you can do, you know, that, that meme of Homer just kind of bleeding back into the shrubbery. Your goblins can do that through a line. They just phase right through it like it's nothing. So it's very easy to suddenly switch sides of the field and be past someone with Underworld, which other teams can't do as well, other than goblins and stunties and stuff, but they can't do it as well because they don't have two heads. So, you know, it's a, it's a play I look for, and I need to I need to do it less. I need to learn, like, the honest offense, because that's one of my weaknesses with this team a lot, but it worked, and I was down 600 TV, and when you're down that much, inducements don't do things. Like, they're just not worth it. You're still behind. So, Gart did a thing. He got Dandy off the pitch. Almost broke him. If that had... If he had gotten, like, AV bust into strength bust on that Apo or something, that would have felt good for me. Because this team was built, actually... I'm pretty sure this team was built to hunt my killer rat and Golgothan's killer rat. I don't know if mine was on the hit list when this team came up, but this team was meant to hunt hit list players. And I have two. And Golgothan has at least one, maybe five. I don't know. So... This team was hunting me. This is part of its purpose was to maul my team. So coming out of there with the draw, I will take that. Again, it should have been a loss. I will fully admit that. But look at this. I scored with 6% ball possession and 6% occupation of own half. No occupation of other opponent's half. There was no turn where I had the ball in my possession on his half without scoring. Uh, 21 blocks, 3 KOs, 1 injury. 50 blocks, 6 KOs, 2 injuries. So... Basically twice as many blocks, twice as many injuries. So we were pretty even on that. I had a couple fouls that did things. Uh, no yards passing because it wasn't caught. 21 blocks, yeah. So also the reason that that was a punt and not a pass to the Goblin is animosity. I did not want to risk the 1-6 and six on the animosity. I wanted to just throw it. Like, get it downfield. Doesn't matter. Just get it inaccurate downfield and run it down. So, Gwart... I'm not, that's not stealing SPP because I would not have generated that injury on Space Dandy without, without Glart. My, my claw mighty blow, my claw palm 
horns piece was out. And without him, nobody else was, was claw strength four. So Glart didn't steal that. He earned that. Uh, Mystery Meat, my new thrower, is one pass away from leveling. And who is the other one? Snicket, which is my... Yeah, that's my two-headed line rat with Russell. He's closer to, to leveling. And maybe he takes strip ball next. Um, maybe he takes tackle. I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, dice rolls. Uh, I rolled a buttload of dice. That is a lot of dice. And one of these sixes was super clutch. So that, that's a lot of dice to be rolling. Not a lot of block dice, but I got I got my fair share of pals and push pals. Don't know how many of those were on tackle pieces or on on dodge pieces, but I had some tackle. Uh, he rolled a lot more block dice. Got got some good results over here. Got some good results. So he didn't do as much damage as he wanted. Uh, you know, he'll probably take the eight on Boba Fett the the third, but. Other than that, he got 12 SPP, I got 8. But my team's pretty well developed, I don't really care that much. Uh, the SPP went to two of my weaker rats, so I'll take it. Uh, that was me versus Space Dandy. Again, I, I think he should have won this game, I think he should have put the ball in. But he was banking on the wizard, and trying to avoid getting any more guys' injuries. He he might have been on tilt, because he's he a little bit. Because he said that I had the removal advantage at one point, and I never... Never in that game had the removal advantage. Uh, I had one injury and one KO in that first half, and I think he had one injury and like three KOs or two KOs. So he was ahead of me on removing pieces. I just had a, a, an extra piece on the bench, and I took his big guy out before he got mine. But I don't, there were very few times in that game where I had a man advantage. Um, so I, I, I don't know. He was overly afraid of Claw, I think. He should have not been afraid of that. Uh, but it is what it is. I'll take the draw. Um, and I'll catch you guys next time. That's all. Goblin Marine signing off.